I just read an amazing book. It's called The Art of Learning. It's by Josh Waitskin. And this book opened my mind to productivity because learning is one of the most important things that we need to do every day of our lives, even when we get older, to be able to be productive. So let's get into it. Good day, YouTube. My name is Ali, and this is Work vs. Life, a show that's dedicated to giving you creative ideas and advice to help you win back your workday and have a balanced life. So The Art of Learning is an amazing book that kind of gives you the storyline of Josh Waitzkin and how he became a chess master and then from there became a judo master and how he seemingly was a really good learner and he had figured out a methodology on how to learn things. And I was really intrigued on how he broke down the process of how he learned chess as a young child and then changed disciplines later on in life. And all the while he surfs and has a pretty productive and balanced life. So after reading the book, I wanna pull out three points that I think would be really helpful for productivity and I recommend that after you watch this episode you go buy the book and you read it as well too because I think it's gonna be a perfect read especially if you're looking to learn and become productive at the same time building resiliency is an important factor when it comes to learning because you need to be able to be disciplined and you need to be able to hang out in the fire when you don't want to and that's a hard thing to do so when I wake up at four o'clock in the morning and go to the pool or go out for a run I don't want to do it I don't want to wake up early I want to stay up late at night and I want to wake up late and I just don't want to go to the gym. And I force myself to be consistent every day to show up for these workouts because I know if I can discipline myself and work out and train hard that I can build a mindset in my own lifestyle to be able to stand in hard situations. You need to start small and give yourself some stressful situations. Now, it may not be working out. It may be presenting to a group of people every day. Maybe it's you getting on a Zoom call and doing a presentation that's maybe a little uncomfortable for you, but if you do that presentation once a week to a group of people, you're gonna see that presentations are like nothing. You can do them in your sleep now. That is the consistency you need to build when you're building resiliency. So in the book, Josh Waitzkin talks a lot about resiliency in learning because when he was a chess player, he would have to sit down in tournaments for hours and chess is a tough game of strategy where he had to think about his moves under pressure. So the key to building resiliency is three things. One of them is to be calm under pressure. The other one is to be consistent and the other one is to build discipline. If you master these three things, you will become resilient and you will learn things faster and you will spend more time learning. So the second point I wanna talk about is failing. Failure is not a bad thing, failure is good. If you fail, fail again because success is nothing more than a series of failures. When you fail, be comfortable with that. So if I can give you an example of what good failure looks like here, it's like this. Recently, we hired an account manager here at VMI. The account manager was a junior manager that had no agency experience, but when I hired him, I realized that the guy's got some talent and I wanted him on my team. So I decided to bring him on board with the premise that I knew he was gonna fail a whole bunch of times because he has no idea how to work within the agency structure, especially a digital agency that works in healthcare. So what we decided to do was bring him on board and just do a little trial by fire and start having him work with clients. And he was okay with this because we had a nice conversation about this. Every time he made a little mistake while working on a project or maybe communicating with a client, I would stop him and I'd say, hey, this is a teaching moment. But I explained to him that it wasn't technically a failure and we were gonna use this as a stepping stone to up his career. So every time he flubbed something with a client or missed something in the notes, I would just stop him and say, hey, so let's talk a little bit about it and figure out what happened. And then he would mark that as, okay, this is where I failed and I will never make that mistake again. And there was never any hard feelings about it. There's nothing wrong with failure when you are learning because in the end, that's how you're gonna learn. And that mindset is important important because if you are worried about failing, you will get stuck. And if you get stuck, you will never learn. So if the art of learning and the learning process resonates with you, leave me a comment on the things that you want to learn about. Go ahead and like this video so we can spread the word to others. So the last point here is a very important one, and that is to always remain humble and never become an expert. There's a learning curve with everything, right? And when you learn a subject matter, you are immediately in the first five minutes, boom, oh, I get this, I understand this, and then you stop learning. As soon as you think you're an expert in something, my advice to you is keep learning, because I can assure you that whatever you're learning is really just a vast ocean of knowledge. So let me give you an example of what that looks like in my own life. So I play guitar. 
During my early years of guitar, I took some lessons and I would play guitar in my bedroom and the only person that actually really heard me was my mom and she said I was an amazing guitar player. My goal was to eventually play in a band. So I was kind of learning all these songs to be able to become a rock guitarist and become a famous musician. That's what I wanted to do as a child. So one day one of my friends called me up and said, hey Ali, you wanna try out for my band? And I was like, dude, that's amazing. Yes, absolutely. So I practiced a little bit and I went to rehearsals with the band and I started jamming out with them. And in five minutes they said, thanks but no thanks. And that was a shock to me. Why did they not want me to be in the band? And I realized I've been playing for years in my bedroom, but I never played for anybody else. And when I played in front of a bunch of experts, they were like, you're not that good. I thought I was an expert, but the experts didn't think I was an expert. So there was a problem right then and there. So this is the point, avoid being the expert always be learning spend time testing out your skill sets with experts and get feedback from them and they will tell you if you're an expert or not so i went back to the drawing board and i realized that guitar playing is not a destination it's a journey that i will always be learning guitar and i will never tell myself that i'm an expert because the second i told myself i was an expert as a young child playing guitar i capped myself off now i'm always learning and i can tell you that i'm a better guitar player for it learning's Big nemesis is a term I call the resistance. Do you find yourself stalling out when you're trying to learn something? Watch this video and learn all about how you can eliminate procrastination in your life.